Amen, amen, and amen. Lift your hands if you will this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence all over this place. Thank you, Lord. We're expectant as this year comes to a close in a few days' time, in a month or so's time. Father, we thank you that we're expecting for a greater 2018. Thank you for an incredible year. Father, there's still 30 days left or some more in this year. You can still do explosive things until the end of this year. We're expecting, Lord. Speak to us specifically this morning, to every single person here in Cape Town, there in Stellenbosch, in Malmesbury, watching us via technology this morning. I pray you'll speak to your children specifically. Call those that are away from you home this morning. Call those that are distant from you back this morning. I pray you'll, people will encounter you specifically this morning and personally. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Come on, if you believe that, give Jesus a great big shout of praise one more time. Turn to somebody next to you this morning. Shake the hands of one of the people. Greet somebody in this place this morning. Welcome somebody here up on the balcony, in your seat, in Malmesbury, in Stellenbosch. Our ladies are at the prison this morning at Polesmoor doing a she conference, all the ladies over there. So we're all the wards and uh, many of the dignitaries there this morning. So we're praying and believing they're going to have a great impact there this morning. And uh, I'm excited. How many of you excited to be alive this morning? How many of you excited to be in church this morning? If you're visiting us for the first time, welcome to you. Great to have you here. Always great to have guests and visitors with us this morning. I know that your time is not wasted time this morning. Whatever the reason is that you might be here, you might have been invited. We're having a baby dedication later. But know this, that God's house is a place where He wants to speak to you specifically. He wants to challenge you. And we, I'm going to talk to us this morning. The title of our message is Greater 2018. Pastor Art spoke to us uh, this last while, and we've uh, our theme for next year is Greater 2018. Our theme for this year was Explosion 2017, and we're exploding into the greater things of God. Amen. And that's why even as, you, as you're going to de dedicate your children this morning, uh, some of those of you that are dedicating your babies know this, that God's plan for your family, for your child, for you is greater. God wants us to do greater things. So be expectant for what God wants to do in and through your life. Amen. We're expectant of great, great, great things. Do you believe that this morning? So come on, put your hands together. Welcome all of our first-time visitors here this morning. Welcome the great church of Stellenbosch. Welcome the great church of Malmesbury this morning. Amen. As we're going to be planting a church soon in Malmesbury. They're linking with us already in the mornings. So we're going to be planting a work over there very soon in the new year. Somerset West next year. Amen. Bergfleet next year. We're also planting a church with Pastor Sean from Bloemfontein down in Bergfleet next year. So there's many things happening. Great explosion taking place all over the city. Can you say amen? Bump your neighbor on the left hand side. Tell him, get ready for a greater 2018. Bump your neighbor on the other side. Say, there's still 30 days left for explosion. John 14 verse 12, the Bible says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Title of a message this morning, Greater 28, a word of encouragement, amen, a word of encouragement as we go towards the end of this year. And I realize as you re read that scripture, the Bible is clear. God had not sent Jesus to minimize man to a life of guilt and shame and sin focus, but rather to cheer us on and support us to greater works of vision, faith, and freedom, and to focus on His Son. God is not sin focused, God is Son focused. He sent Jesus for us this morning, a message of hope, a message of faith this morning, amen, a message of encouragement. No matter where you find yourself this morning, I want you to know God has got a greater plan for your life, amen. So greater works you will do, that's what the Bible says, Jesus speaking. He says greater works we will do. We're not trying to outdo Jesus, but He was on the earth for 33 years. His ministry was three years. He says we've got a lot more time to do great works of faith. So greater works we will do. Whatever you ask in my name, words of encouragement, words of freedom, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Amen. He's inviting us to ask Him for greater things. He's inviting us to believe Him for greater things. Amen. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. So God's not out to limit you this morning, Stellenbosch. God's not out to try to lessen your life. God's not trying to stifle your faith or your future. Amen. God's not out to punish you or to teach you a lesson. So many people walk around believing that's the God we serve. 
something goes wrong in my life? Well, isn't God trying to teach me a lesson? Isn't God punishing me through this thing? Haven't I done something wrong? Yes, the Bible says we've all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. But God, the Bible says it pleased the Father to smite His Son. He placed all sin and punishment upon Jesus. That's the incredible story of Christianity. And yet sometimes as Christians, we think that God's out to get us. So the Bible said He placed everything upon His Son. And when He placed it upon His Son, the Bible says that's why we can stand and believe Him for greater things. Can you say amen this morning? Bump your name on your left hand side. Say, greater 2018 lying ahead for you. And so we serve a great God this morning, amen, who has great plans for your life. He sees only great things ahead, amen. That's the God we serve, a God who has great plans for your life. He's cheering us on to greater things. Greater works you shall do, says the Bible. But I want us to notice something this morning. The promise to greater is available to everyone. Everyone who hears my voice this morning, there is a promise to a greater 2018 lying ahead. But the manifestation of greater, Jesus says, lies in who and what and where we place our belief. He says, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me. There are so many people believing God or their, their, their spouse or their, their, themselves for a greater future. But Jesus was very specific. He said, although there is a greater promise, where you place your belief will determine if that promise will become greater. And he says, he who believes in me. So we have to put our faith fully in Jesus Christ. We have to put our faith fully in the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Because right believing equals right living. Right believing equals right living. There are so many people trying to live right. So many people trying to, to make things happen in their life. But the Bible is very clear. If your faith is in me, if you believe in me, greater things you shall do. Amen. So God's will for your life is greater. But often man's will for himself is later. God's will for your life is greater. But often man's will for himself is later. Oh, I'll start that business later. I'll start that dream later. I'll phone that person later. I'll say sorry to my spouse later. I'll believe later. I'll serve God later. I'm living my own life right now. Leave me alone. I'm quite fine with myself. But yet we find that we, we sometimes become disillusioned in greater. But greater things we shall do is the promise. But the manifestation lies in where we believe. Amen. So don't delay this morning, my challenge to you. Don't delay what you will believe. Put your faith fully in Jesus Christ. So question to us this morning, where and in what and what have you placed your, your belief in this morning? Where does your belief lie? In what does your belief lie? In who does your belief lie? Because the Bible says you can't say you believe nothing. Everyone has to believe. If you say, I don't believe in something, well, you believe in nothing or in something, nothing. Amen. So, so you, we have to believe in something. Are you, is your belief in yourself this morning? Is your belief in your talents this morning only? Or in yourself only? You should believe in yourself. You should have a great self-confidence. But the Bible says that self-confidence will have a limit. Your talent has a limit. Can you say amen this morning? Are you, is, your, is your belief in your money this morning? Is your belief in your title, your success? Oh, pastor, do you know who I am? Well, I'm, I'm, maybe I might not know who you are. Sorry, I apologize for not knowing who you are. But does heaven know who you are? Does God know your name? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Every man, every human being has to answer that question. And the Bible says, as a result of where you choose to believe, then we can hold on to the promise of greater, amen. Greater things we shall do, amen. Because I go to be with my Father, but I'm going to leave you with the authority, with the keys to do greater things. And so the Bible is very clear. God wants to, you, you, us to put our belief in Him. Notice Romans chapter 1 verse 19. Paul writes to the church. And he says to the church, he says that although people say they don't believe in God, some people put off their faith, some people put off their belief. I ran away from God for many years. My family had an encounter with God. My mother and my father had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And I said, no, later. I'll, I'll try and sort myself out first. When I'm okay, when I've sorted out my mess, then I'll, I'll come to God. But the Bible is very clear. Come as you are. Come as you are right now. Because you only know in part, amen. Google and Wikipedia and your university degree only knows to a point. But the Bible says we serve one who knows all things. We serve one who is all-knowing. We serve, we serve one who is all-present, omnipresent, omniscient. At the same place, at the same time. He knows the heartbeat of your heart. He knows every thought in your mind, says the Bible. And He's not out to punish you for your, your thoughts or your, your, your shortcomings. The Bible said He's out to get you into greater things. He wants to open up your new year into a great 2018. Can you say amen this morning? 
And so Paul writes to the church and he says to the church in Rome, as you're going to step out now and challenge people to believe Christ into greater things, he says, you're going to find some people who say, well, I believe in nothing. He says, no, no man will be with any excuse, without excuse. Romans 1.19, the Bible says, for the truth about God is known to them instinctively. Paul's writing to the church. He says, every human being instinctively knows there is a God. He says, instinct, you, you know there's a God. Oh, I'm an atheist. I'm an agnostic. An atheist says there is no God. Well, to believe that there is no God takes great belief. Amen. Paul says it takes great belief to be an atheist. An agnostic, well, I'm not sure if there's a God. I see some people go to church, but I see they go to church, but I'm not sure. I can't say there's not a God because I can see certain things. So Paul says, for the truth about God is known to them instinctively. God has put this knowledge in their hearts. Every man knows there's a God. But where you choose to place your belief is your choice. Amen. Verse 20, since earliest times men have, have seen the earth and the sky and all God has made and have known of his existence and great eternal power. So they will have no excuse when they stand before God at judgment day. The Bible says you see the rain, you see the clouds, you see the moon. You see a, a woman who is pregnant. King David says, he says, it fathoms my mind, it boggles my mind. How does bone grow in a womb of a woman? He says, he says it must be God. It can only be God. Because, I mean, man has tried forever to try and clone humans and try and do all kinds of scientific things. But God says, well, he says, it's impossible. I, I'm, I've created you. I've, I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you before you were born. The only thing you have to do now is change your belief. You believe in yourself. You believe in your knowledge and your wisdom. He says, believe in me. I made you. I formed you. Amen. And that's why God wants to take you into greater things this morning. And the verse 21, the Bible says, yes, they knew about him all right. But they wouldn't admit it or worship him or even thank him for all his daily care. They knew God was there, but they wouldn't admit it. The Bible says, and after a while they began to think up silly ideas of what God was like and what he wanted them to do. The result was that their foolish minds became dark and confused. There's a lot of clever people with many degrees out there that are, are doing foolish things out there. The Bible says, because what, 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 what man thinks is intellectual is actually foolishness to God. And what seems foolishness to man is actually very intellectual to God. The Bible says to speak about love, to love somebody of a different color. It's foolishness to some people who, who, who've segregated themselves or compartmentalized themselves. I'm not a racist, I'm race conscious. No, you're a racist. Amen. Oh, them and us. Well, since when did God create them and us? The Bible said, for God so loved the world, not your world. He loved the world. But, no, but, we are, but I have a choice. Yes, you, that's what the Bible says. You have the ability to, to make up a story in your mind. You can, you can push God out. You can, you can justify something through your intellect. But the Bible said, for God so loved the world. So every single person out there, every other religion out there, every single color out there, every creed, every language, God died for the whole world, not just our world. Not just your little world and your little, where you work and your family and your surname and your name. That's why Paul the Apostle said, he said, I want to know Him. I don't want to know myself because myself, if I'm with myself, I can get up to trouble. But I want to know Him. I want to know more about who He is. That's why He says, put your faith in me. And I will lead you. I will guide you. I will take you into a great new year. Because I know the plans I think towards you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. So don't push me out. Don't, 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 don't discard me. Don't, don't, don't delay me. He says, receive me. Believe in me. And then instead of worshiping, verse 23 the glorious ever-living God, they took wood and stone and made idols for themselves, carving them to look like mere birds and animals and snakes and puny men. The Bible describes what people put their hope in, their faith in. Some people say, well, I haven't got, I'm not an idol worshiper, but sometimes our possessions are something we, we can't let go of. We worship them. And God doesn't want you to get rid of them. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says to him, good master, he says, why are you sucking up to me? Because you think you've got money, you can buy salvation? He says, No. You can't buy yourself into heaven. He said, you must put your faith and your belief in me. So he said, he said, well, he said, if I keep the commandments, he was a Jew. That's why he said, keep these commandments. I do those good things. I mean, I, I, I go to my, my church or I, I make cook sisters at my fate or I, I gave away my second, uh, my second hand jersey or my old shoes I didn't want. I'm doing good things. And Paul the apostle said, our good works are like filthy rags before him. Because you insult the blood of Jesus when you think you can save yourself. He said, no man will stand before him one day. Your flesh, he says, will go to the box. Our flesh will all go back to the box. But yet when we're outside of knowing him, 
and we know our faith is in ourself, our faith is in our, in our, in our status, in our club. And we notice how the world operates. I mean, you get business class, and then you get economy class, and you get the seat next to the toilet. Amen. And you have to walk through business class, so there's sort of three degrees in there, and look at you and say, have a great flight back there, sucker. I've got a platinum super duper whooper uh, goldy uh, silver silver super duper car. I'm, I'm more important. And it's not wrong to, to prestige in life and do great things in life. But the Bible said if those things are greater than your, your love for Him or your humility, your, your willingness to bow your knee to Him, He says that becomes an idol. So God wants to put you in business class so you can reach someone who, who doesn't know Him. God wants to elevate you. He wants to take you to greater things, to greater heights. He wants to put you in the Springbok team. Amen. Didn't Bongi play well on, uh, where's Anastasia? Didn't Bongi play well yesterday? I saw, saw all the COC boys were scoring the tries yesterday on the field. It's great to see. Encouraging. We send the messages of, of encouragement. But God, I often tell them, I said, God didn't call you to have a green and gold jersey. God put you there so when there's no rugby, you're sitting in the hotel foyer and you can talk to the coach. Or you can talk to someone. That's why God wants to elevate you to greater things. But do you know Him this morning? Where is your faith this morning? God wants to set you up for a greater 2018. Verse 4 of Romans chapter 2, Paul goes on to tell them the condition of man. And he says this, he says, Do you despise the riches of His goodness, sir, ma'am, His forbearance, His long-suffering? He's waiting. This morning God is still waiting. He gave His life 2,000 years ago, but this morning He's still waiting for you, sir, ma'am. They're in Malmesbury. They're in Stellenbosch. She's waiting for you here in Cape Town. The Bible says, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The Bible said God's goodness leads us to salvation. Not God's judgment. The Bible said God judged Jesus. When Jesus said, Father, where are you on the cross? Why have you forsaken me? That was the moment when God said, for the sake of you sitting here this morning and me standing here this morning. That moment, he rejected his son to receive you and me. He made his son a blood offering. Once and for all, man can have a relationship with God again. But sometimes we, this morning, we sit in a place like this and we still shun God. We push him out. I'm still busy with my life, Pastor. I'm busy with my life, God. Don't nag me. Don't irritate me. You can believe it. You can go to church. You can clap your hands. You can do all that happy, clappy stuff. I'm okay right now. But will you be okay in eternity? Don't you know it's the goodness of God that leads you? It's God's goodness calling you because God sees a greater future for you. When I was lost in myself as a young man, 23 years old, full of alcohol, drugs, living my own life, trying to sort myself out. I used to run from God and the further I ran, He he was there because the Bible says you make your bed in hell, I'm there. You make your bed in the heavens, I'm there. When it's going well, I'm there. When it's going bad, I'm there because I can never leave you nor forsake you. But yet we look at, oh God, I made this mistake and, and now you're going you're gonna to punish me. No, the Bible says God wants to take us into a greater future. You need to see 2018 as a great future. You need to see 2018 with great expectation. Forget what happened in 2017 behind you, amen. Are you here this morning? So I believe, our belief in God is only going to set you up for greater things, a greater future, amen. And so get ready for a greater 2018. I believe this morning, get ready for a greater 2018. But how many of you know that nothing great started great? Nothing great starts great. Pastor, where do I start? I haven't got great faith like him or like her. Well, sometimes if you look at a person in a gym, every human is born a baby. But why have some guys got muscles on their muscles? Some guys have got muscles in their smile. They go to gym so much. I mean, they can pick up 50 kilos with their cheek. They're so, they're so, they're so muscular. But yet, for other people, other folks, excluding myself, now because I mean, you know, this pristine body, you know what it's like. It's I'm going to keep this pristine body in shape. But for some people, you know, we've got, well, Pastor, we've got a six pack. It's just under my fat. But yet, sometimes we look at a guy and we desire their physique, but we're not willing to go through their process. And so, that's, that's like many humans are. We desire the the, 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 we desire heaven. We want to please. We want to stand before God one day and say, "Please accept me, God." And He goes, "Yes, but there's a process." It's called bow your knee to my son. It's called submit your life to his lordship. Don't just compartmentalize him. Don't use him when you need him. Make him your whole life. Amen. Are you here this morning? And that's what the Bible says. You don't need great faith to please God. You just need faith like a mustard seed. All you have to do is just say yes. One word, yes. And guess what? It's a start. Listen to what Jesus said. Matthew 13, 31. Because some people think, 
I don't know where to start because if I look at their muscles, how do I get big muscles like that? Just start by, just start by coming to the gym. And just come back tomorrow. And pick up two kilos and then pick up three kilos. And then cut out that kind of food. And over time, in five, six, seven, ten years from now, you'll look the same. And so it is with faith. Just start where you are. God's not expecting great things for you now, but He's going to set you up for great things if you'll just start where you are. Matthew 13, 31. Another parable he put forth to him saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Notice he uses an analogy. A mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds on the planet. Not a big seed, a mustard seed. He says, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. Sometimes you feel like the least. Sometimes you feel like you're nothing. Sometimes you feel like you're insignificant. Oh, all my family, they get all the accolades. Oh, my family, or my brother, or my sister, whatever it is, they seem to be getting all the highlights. I'm just the least. But God notices every single human. But what will you do, sir, man, wherever you find yourself this morning? Will you become like a seed? He says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Speaking about sowing his life, sowing whatever it is God requires of you, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater. Notice there comes the greater. God's plan for you is always greater, amen, than all the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. So notice again this morning, it does not take grown faith to start, but it takes sown faith to start. Some people think we have to have grown muscles. No, it, talks, it starts with just sowing yourself. Just, just sow something. Okay, pastor, I'll commit to one, one, one Sunday morning, nothing more. Okay, great, just start there. I'll commit just to start reading my Bible. One chapter a day, just start there. Just start somewhere. Amen. And when you start, that mustard seed faith, you give it to God. He's now able to do exceedingly abundantly above. He's able to make it greater. What you can't do, He can do. Amen. But sometimes we get intimidated with somebody that might be ahead of us. Just start where you are this morning. Amen. And so verse 31, the Bible says, the kingdom of God is like a, a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. So the man had to take the small seed and sow it. So there's a God part and there's a man part to greater. God's part is, if you ask in my name, I will do it for you. Your part is to believe in Him. There's a man part and a God part to everything in life. Amen. A God part and a man part. Verse 32, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, when the seed that you've sown, whatever it is, small seed, mustard faith seed is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. So that the birds of the air come and nest in his branches. Notice, God says there's a herb. It's a bush. It's a herb bush. He says, but when you plant the seed, you're, a, you're below the herb bush. You're looking up to the herb bush. You're looking up to somebody. But that person has already reached their capacity. He says, but I see in you a tree. You're going to outgrow that herb. Amen. So if your name is Herbie this morning, we're going to grow past you. Amen. Because he's all become greater than Herbie. But sometimes we start out and we become, we become disillusioned or intimidated or we delay things because we look at sin. And sometimes sin is the greatest thing that limits people from serving God. Because the church comes with a big finger and says, this is everything you're doing wrong, all the do's and don'ts. And the Bible says God's not sin-focused, He's son-focused. He has a vision for your life. He sees greater things for you. But will you start at mustard seed faith? Will you just say yes, just a little bit, just one word, Yes. And that, yes, rich young ruler, what must I do to go to heaven? Keep the commandments. Oh, I do those things. Well, what else must I do? Okay, let me see. Your, 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 your stronghold, and he doesn't want your money, but that man's stronghold was his success. He said, well, let me see if you're really desperate. Let me see if you're really serious about heaven. How serious are you about going to heaven? He says, tell you what, why don't you sell everything and give it all to the poor and have nothing and come and follow me? And what Jesus was actually saying to him was, he didn't want him to give up everything. What he was trying to say to him was, you think you can put a price on your salvation, but I'm going to give you the ultimate price. I'm going to give my life. And not many people are willing to give their lives. Amen. Like he was, because God doesn't expect every human to give their life unto death like he did. But he gave his life so we can have life on the earth. So will you, will you sacrifice just your, your, some of your time? Some of your money, some of your, some of your effort, whatever it is, just sacrifice something for God this morning. And when you just say that, take a little bit of yes, this, this, this mustard seed faith starts to grow in your life. Amen. And so when it is grown, it is greater than all the herbs. So you might not be where you want to be this morning, but thank God you're not where you used to be. God is busy growing you. God is busy raising you up. Amen. 2017 might have been a tough year in some shape, form, or size. But let me tell you, 2018 is going to be greater. 2018 is going to be better. Amen. Because you're in the ground, 
and God is busy growing you. Amen. So people might be looking down on you. Amen. People might be looking over your head, but as you grow, they're going to say, where did he come from? No, he just started with mustard seed faith. Amen. So I hope your name is not Herbie this morning, like I said earlier, because God said you'll become greater than the herbs. Amen. And God's going to make you, uh, give you a capacity. That means the branches, he says your branches are going to expand. The birds of the air will come rest on your branches. Meaning, if you're in business, get ready to expand your branches. Get ready to expand your agencies. Get ready to expand your departments. Get ready because God sees a great plan for you. The birds, the customers, the, the wealth of the wicked is going to come rest on your branches. That's the promise of God. But will you become a seed? Will you say yes to Him and put your faith in Him? If you believe in me, that's the start. Then you, end, you, 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 you call me into a partnership. Because you, right now you're trying to sort everything out by yourself. And you're running out of ideas. You're running out of, out of answers. But I am the answer. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Will you put your faith in me? Because if you believe in me, amen, that's your choice. Greater things you shall do. So in closing this morning, I believe five areas that God wants to expand us into 2018. Enlarge us. God wants to mature us in. I believe the first area is God wants to make us greater in love in 2018. God wants to make us greater in love. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friend. So the Bible says the greatest love anyone can have is to lay down your life for your friend. To give up something for someone else. It's the greatest thing you can do. It speaks of surrender of self. Not neutralizing self. God can't, doesn't want to neutralize you. He doesn't want to remove you like most religious Christians think. Oh, if I'm, if I'm humble and poor, if, or if I'm poor, God will keep me humble. No. God doesn't want to neutralize you. Amen. God wants you to surrender your life to Him. So you can enter into an agreement. You can make Him a partner in your future. Amen. As you make Him a partner, the Bible says suddenly, the love of God will be poured out into your heart. And you'll be able to live in South Africa with hope. Because you're not color conscious, amen. You're not, you're not race conscious. You're not, you're not culture conscious. You're not issue conscious. But you are love conscious. Because he loves you first extravagantly. Now we love other people back the same way. But this all men will know that you are my disciples. The love you have for one another. So don't say you're a Christian and you hate your brother. Because the Bible said, how can you say you love your brother who you see, but you, but you say you love God who you don't see? He says, you're a hypocrite. Says, because if I'm in you, I didn't come with conditions. I forgave a woman in adultery. I, for, I raised the guy. He broke down all of the religious cows of the Jews. Oh, you can't heal someone on the Sabbath, so he does it. The law says a woman caught in adultery must be stoned. He wasn't agreeing with the adultery. He was trying to break down all of the religious cows. Because sometimes we hold on to all these religious things we were taught by our fathers and our forefathers. And I'm not trying to neutralize your forefathers. But I'm saying when Christ comes into you, truth of eternity, truth comes into you. A different truth from your parents. A different truth from your culture. Because sometimes what you think is truth is not necessarily God's truth. Oh, they different to us. That's maybe your family's truth, but it's not God's truth. God's truth is I came to die for the world. Every single human being. There's a place for every human being on the planet. Amen. So I believe God's going to raise us up to greater in love. 1 Corinthians 9.19 For though I'm free from all men, I can decide to live over there in my corner. I can decide to live with my family. I can decide to keep my faith for myself. I can choose my friends. I can choose where I hang out. But Paul says, I give it all up for him. He says, I have made myself a servant to all. I, that I might win them all. Because my life is not my own. I've given it up. He says, and to the Jews I became as a Jew. Notice, I did not become Jewish. So don't go to Israel looking for Jesus and come back with a shofar. Amen. People go to Israel, they come back and they start doing Jewish things. You don't go to, Jesus is not in, in Israel, He's in heaven. He's at the right hand of His Father, interceding for you and me and your weaknesses, and He sent us a help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to show us Jesus. He's going to reveal more of Jesus to you. That's why you need the Holy Spirit, not to be flaky. You need the Holy Spirit to know Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is cheering you on. Jesus is cheering you on. He's your best supporter. So stop being so hard on yourself and allow Him to be part of your life. To those who are under the law, I become as under the law. So I understand why someone is lawful. I don't become lawful myself, but I understand why they act like they do. To those who are without the law, as without the law. So if someone's in a nightclub and he's on drugs or on alcohol and he's maybe on a promiscuous website, he's not under the law, he doesn't understand the rights and wrongs, don't you lose your brain now. 
and start judging him with your Christian finger. The Bible says, understand why he's lawless. Because he doesn't know Christ. Understand why he's lawful. Because he doesn't know Christ. Understand why he's acting that way. Because he doesn't know Christ. Understand why a Muslim is the way he is. Because the way he is, is the way he's been taught. That's his level of truth. But he doesn't know the truth. And I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So don't judge another man's decisions based on religion. Give him truth. Don't give him judgment. Don't give him more law. Don't give him more persecution. Give him truth. Amen. Are you here this morning? So greater in love. We have, to, we have to learn to love other people different from us. I hope this morning after the service you get up from your chair and you greet somebody that's got a different pigmentation to you. Because it's so natural for us just to gravitate towards people like us. Why don't you greet somebody this morning when you, before you leave the building? I mean, maybe you're sitting here this morning, you, you're, you're on choke level because you're seeing other people of a different color. What mark Allah iso? So what mark ye dan iso? Amen. Oh, yeah, this morning. Because don't say anything about another one of God's children if Christ is in you. It's impossible. Love your brother. I'm not saying accept everything your brother does. That's why one of the fruits of the Spirit is long suffering. Who long can I be? Did suckle? I don't know until. Because Jesus said the same thing to his disciples. He said, How long am I going to struggle with you guys? I'm. God is here and you're still making stupid decisions. I mean, they made knucklehead decisions with Christ being next to them. What do you expect of us? He's not even next to us. He's in us, but he's not with us. So we're going to make, we're prone to make some mistakes. Stop being so hard on people and love them. Unconditionally, the agape love of God. I don't place a condition. Woman, where are your accusers? The woman caught in adultery. There are none, Lord. Well, neither do I accuse you. That's what he for I believe God wants to take us greater into honor. Greater in honor. Listen, 1 Corinthians 12, 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Again, speaking of a brother in the church that's different to you. Nor again the, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. You can't say, that your, your head doesn't say to your feet, I don't need you. He says, no, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. I believe next year God wants us to get more involved in our communities, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our people that in the country that haven't had opportunity. Amen. I believe God wants us to start, start educating, helping to educate people quicker, to put honor upon people that we might not deem according to our social structures as honorable. Because we always honor the guy with a super duper platinum premium card. But do we honor the guy at the back? I'm going to phone the airlines and say they must let economy class board first. Amen. Because we're going to change that now. We're going to honor the lesser. Oh, yeah, this morning. Pastor, uh, are you saying we shouldn't fly business class? Please fly business class. Just be honorable in business class. Amen. Honor the waiter. I hate it when I sit with somebody and they, they insult a waiter. I hate it. Because that person is serving you. And you get irritated. They, 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 you, got, you got the money, they have to jump to your tune because you're going to pay the bill, so they have to jump to your tune. But just honor the lesser. Why don't you thank them sometime? If the kitchen makes, up a, makes a mess with the order, don't shoot the messenger. Just, just, just be honorable. Let the love of God come out of you. Say amen with me this morning. Greater in freedom, I believe, the third thing. I believe God wants to take us greater into freedom. There are so many Christians that are still bound. We say we're free, but we're not completely free in the sense of our understanding. We might be free in justification. We're going to go to heaven. Jesus set us free. But we're not free now in our understanding on the earth. We're still living in these compartments of guilt and shame. We're not totally free in certain areas. Amen. 1 John 3.20, the Bible says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. How many hearts don't condemn people every day? Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't fit in. I, I, I did this. I made a mistake. Whatever it is, your heart might even condemn you. You might be a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, and you're living with condemnation. Your heart condemns you. And the Bible said, yes, the good news. If your heart condemns you, know this. God is greater than your heart. Because He is greater. And He died for you. And there's nothing you're facing that He can't solve this morning. There is no problem too hard for God. There is no sin too great for God that He can't forgive. There is no one too far from him that he can't draw closer to him. His hand is not too short that it cannot save. But what will you do this morning? Will you bow your knee to his lordship? Or will you still live in your compartment, your compartment of yourself? John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He is the truth. 
John 8, 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The fourth thing I believe God wants to make us greater in next year is to take us into a greater understanding of faith. Greater in faith. 1 John 4, verse 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because, you, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We, we live with a God inside of us. The Bible said who is greater than anything you face in the world. That means you have the capacity, the faith. Even if it's mustard seed faith, you have the ability to grow into great faith. And you can overcome. You have the ability to overcome because He overcame already. And when He's in you and with you and for you, you will overcome. Now, I don't care what you're going through. Your business might be in a tight spot this morning. If you make Him your partner in your business and you submit your need to Him and you bow to Him and you make your business a voice for Him and you use your business as a channel to, to, to spread good news in the marketplace, God will do the supernatural. Amen. You do the natural, He will do the supernatural. Can you say amen this morning? And finally... I believe God wants to increase us this morning, next year. I believe God wants to increase us in our witnessing. God wants us to be greater witnesses for Him. 1 John 5 verse 9. If we receive the witness of men. Listen, if we receive the witness of men. If man praises you, if man lifts you up. And don't be afraid at times for man to give you accolades. Because there's times when you have done well. If you get an award at your company and they say you've done well, say thank you because you did well. God wasn't lifting the pain. You lifted the pain. You did well. But the Bible said even if you receive accolades from men, if you receive witness from men, He says the witness of God is greater. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which He has testified of His Son. So the Bible said no matter whatever we, whatever we testify about, we must know this. Our greatest testimony is when we testify about what Jesus has done for us. When is the last time you shared with someone what Jesus has done for you? Not about your challenge or your problem or I've gone for counseling and you should go for counseling. We should get help or we need help. But when's the last time you just stepped out of your, out of your, your predicament and told someone about Jesus and watch, all the challenges will start to become less. Because greater is the witness of God in us. Greater is He that is in us. Amen. And Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? Paul's asking the church. He says, how will Cape Town, how will South Africa change? How will this country change? If the church doesn't, isn't mobilized, if the church doesn't leave the four walls of the message and go and take a greater message to the world, amen. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they uh, believe in him in whom they have not heard? There are many people this morning who've never heard of Jesus in Cape Town. And he says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Notice, not judgment comes by hearing. Don't go out and judge people. Tell people, hey, are you getting ready for a greater 2018? Are you ready for a great 2018? I've got some good news for you. My God is for you. My God is not against you. Get ready for a greater 2018 this morning. Can you say amen? Stand on your feet with me all over this place. Come on. Very Selimosh. Very Malmesbury. Here in Kapstadt. Come on. Why don't you give... God some praise this morning. Why don't you give God some worship this morning? Lift up your voices all over this place. Hallelujah. We've got some good news, Cape Town. We've got some good news, Stellenbosch. Our 2018 is going to be greater than our 2017. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads, close your eyes this morning. Believers praying all over this place. They're in Stellenbosch, they're in Cape Town. They're in Malmesbury this morning. Thank you for watching this message. If you'd like to visit our church, go to www.crccapetown.co.za.